Hi, my name is Alex. I tinker for a living. I thought it might be cool to make something useful for your vehicle. In a modern car, all its computers can work together by means of something called CAN bus. I'm going to give you some introduction how to make your own CAN devices. My idea was to build a kind of module that could be whatever you want. A receiver, transmitter, um, perform some logic, whatever. And you can follow my simple instructions and you'll have a good working example. Um, all my examples are tested and working. Uh, maybe later I'll try to explain all science behind it. Uh, now let's start with the can sniffer so we can listen to a network traffic. I don't know if you guys have already any STM experience. Back when I was new to STM, I couldn't find any simple working examples of CAMSYS. Why CAMSYS? Uh, you know, uh, if you don't use any fancy libraries like HELP, you can have more performance, more control over your application, and uh, probably you can make your application work faster. If you are new to STM, I recommend you to start with CAMSYS so you have more comprehension about how microcontroller works. You can use my GitHub link to download my tutorials and uh, probably later I'll go through details. All my examples are tested and working and uh, all you need right now is to have uh, ST-Link, it looks like that, and uh, download Kyle. That's it. Most of my DIY projects are based on STM microcontrollers, the blue pill to be specific. It can be mistaken for Arduino, but that's much more fun for less money. Look at this, I don't believe I can get so much for only $2. It's a 32-bit microcontroller that runs on 72 MHz. This could be enough for all my crazy ideas. And don't get confused if eBay offers you something different than microcontroller. I was confused, by far. When it comes to a handmade device, the blue pill can be easily powered with USB cable and integrated into our project. With CAN interface supported, it fits our project's goal. The bad news are that CAN and USB interfaces share the same resource, so we can't use them simultaneously. But somehow we need to connect it to a PC. The good news are that we still can pull that off using UART to USB converter. Something like this would work out. The last component is a CAN transceiver. I'm using TGA1042 along with a self-made PCB. You can copy my example or use a module like this one. It's up to you. The schematic diagram of my setup would look like this, but could be different with a different transceiver. Just follow the diagram and when you're finished with soldering, let's go through the code. Since my goal is to provide you a working example, you can use the GitHub link and download. It's up here, you are welcome. Uh, I'll just point out the basic functions. CAN messages are coming via CAN interrupt function, right here and preset filters. Use this function to process all IDs and this one to trace specific ones like 1DC in my example. I'm gonna use it in my next tutorial. So only can messages with ID equal to 1DC would be accepted. Back to main C. If accepted, a CAN message is stored in the CAN loop buffer. It's, de it's defined right here. And this whole construction is necessary if you are sniffing all high speed traffic. Then the main loop function picks a message from the buffer and transmits it to a PC terminal. It's simple as that. Now, when our fantastic device is up and running, it's time to test it on a car. 
our target vehicle is Honda. So high speed can is accessible through an OBD port. And I came up with the idea to take an OBD socket, a male socket. Just connect wires to the corresponding pins. You need can high, can low and ground. Some vehicles have separated high speed can and diagnostic can. And this makes connection a little bit more complicated. And now let's uh, power up our device. Um, connect everything and see what's gonna happen. Run any terminal application, choose baud rate and ignition on. Here we go. Now you can see all can traffic coming through our can sniffer. What's gonna happen if we use different filters? One DC for example. It's responsible for tachometer's indication. Okay. Right now you can see how message values are changing together with RPM. Next time we'll try to craft and send some custom messages and see how the vehicle will respond 